Shut up, compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models. Welcome back to the never-ending HK B17 build. So where are we at? Well, basically the fuselage has been glued together. We still have the nose kind of sitting here, just hanging out, not glued in yet, but probably not too far away. Everything else though, the fuselage has been closed. We've started to put some, some of the clear parts on where they're out of the way. We still have these windows here, which the clear parts are frameless, which thanks a whole lot, uh, HK. That's gonna be fun. I have to go in there and paint some olive drab inside the frames and then figure out a way to glue them in that won't destroy it, but will also hold everything nicely against masking. Overall, the fuselage went together. <laughs> That's probably the best I can say for it. Um, on a macro level, it went fine. Everything fit pretty well. It's in a shape. There are no horrific gaps. There are, however, at a micro level, uh, definitely some, I would say, some grody areas. So, particularly around the upper deck here, every single side of it, uh, I had to come in here and basically put two pieces of tape on either side to preserve as much of the detail as I could, and then put some 3M acryl glazing putty in here and work it down with various methods, uh, Q-tips with lacquer thinner, uh, Mr. Level Mr. Leveling Thinner, not hardware store lacquer thinner. Um, then come in with various sanding pads and sticks and things like that and kind of work it down. I also had to glue some evergreen sheet in here along the back of the upper deck. And there are a few bits of it on the underside here with the not great fitting bomb bays. So overall could have been a better experience, but you know. Now I also use some Mr. Surfacer 1000 along the belly seam because I do want a line to be there. I just want it to be not as thick and awful as it looked when it was glued. So overall, uh, not a complete shit show, but a lot of little tiny shit shows that have to be addressed. And now that those have been kind of filled and sanded and all that good stuff, it is time to do some seam checks and also, assuming that they work out great, which they almost certainly won't, um, need to protect them from any future lacquers that will be going on top that could cause, for example, the actual red or the Mr. Surfacer 1000 to shrink and present us with the joy that is ghost seams. So in the interest of preventing that, we're going to be doing some spot priming with Steinal Res. I believe it was Mark Casiglia in Scale Models Critique Group who recommended these little dental cups. These are the things they put polish and shit like that in. Um, as great little mixing cups and things like that. And I still honestly prefer my tattoo ink cups for things like airbrush paint mixing, but for this kind of purpose, I think these are great. I actually use them for uh, mixing the putty with a bit of lacquer thinner. Because they do have a much larger face to them than the ink cups do. So they're a bit easier to work with in that regard. So, We've got some Stylo Res, and we've got a brush. I'm going to zoom this puppy in a bit. So basically, anywhere there is a seam, especially the ones I'm not sure about, we're going to put a little bit of Stylo Res into play. The great thing about Stylo Res is it has absolutely magical leveling abilities. So if there is something still there, we will see it with this stuff. We might just have to give it a little bit of time. All right, here's another area where I wanted the line to remain. I just wanted it to not be so fucking ugly. So we'll see how that works out.
Anyway, you get a sense of what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and complete this, and then we'll pick it back up once this Steinal Res has a chance to dry. Okay, while we wait for the Steinal Res to do its thing, let's go ahead and move on to the wings. Yay! Now we're going to start with the gear bays, which are all of these little parts on sprue F. Now, it says paint them either E or B. Let's see what the hell those colors are, because I have forgotten. B is neutral gray, and E is aluminum. Uh, based on the images that I have seen, I think aluminum is probably the safer bet here. And this thing seems to be black, at least in one of the references I've got. But tough to tell with restoration jobs, so it might just get to be a different shade of aluminum. Gear bays are something I typically don't really give too many fucks about, so let's see what we got here. So let's go ahead and take a look at how the gear bays go together. And I actually have to say I'm pleasantly surprised with these gear bays after the shit show that is the interior. So pretty decent detail in here. We've got wiring, ducting, all that good stuff going on. This is the Ford wall of the gear bay. The cool thing is it literally clicks into place. This is the aft wall. And everything looks pretty good here. This does the same thing. Literally a press fit, downright Tamiya-esque. So, HK doing something right for a change here, unlike what we had before. And we've got the sidewalls. See, the sidewalls have this little hook piece right here. They don't cl click in with quite as much authority, but... They still do their thing. And this side, got the tank set up to go. Blah. Right there with some locating pins. We'll deal with that later. And boom, there is the barrel of the gear bay. That's it. Now, how does this fit into? The wing, that's a good question. So let's see, make sure that we're aligned. Doo, doo, doo. So if it's in there like that, the sidewall things again kind of want to flop around just a tiny little bit, not a big deal. But the front and back walls fit in exactly where they need to go. I thought I was seeing a little something right there that needed to be cleaned up, but that's just a slight gap. So then when we flip this bad boy over, that's what you see. Not bad, right? I'm pleasantly surprised considering what we had to deal with in the interior. So I would say this is good enough that I am going to go ahead and paint these as separate pieces so that we can do some fun washes and things like that and maybe some detail work on some specific elements. Before I do that, I need to go ahead and clean up the other side. Okay, so this sucker's had overnight to set up and overall the seams look pretty good, except in two places. Along the back here, it's uh, nastiness. <laughs> And right up here, just forward of the upper deck piece, between that and the Astrodome here, we've got Come on, focus. Okay, there we go. So 
So right up here, just in front of the upper deck, where the nose pair. So right up here, just in front of the upper deck, where the nose parts meet from here up to the placement for the Astrodome. It's kind of wide, kind of nasty. It's fine down here. This is all good. It's just this little stretch. And then back here, there's just chaos going on. So I'm going to have to be able to scribe in these areas. And I also have to navigate clear parts in the same areas, which will be interesting. But to do this, I'm going to give some of this ammo slow dry black stuff a try because it worked really well underneath by the chin turret. The only problem with the chin turret was it was very uncontrolled and it was just a sloppy mess. And there's kind of some detail around here that I want to, you know, hold on to. So we're going to use one of these little makeup brushes that you can buy by the hundreds on Amazon or eBay and use it to hopefully get a bit more of a controlled application. And one frustration about this CA is that even though it says it's black, I just need to accept that I'm going to have to come in here and probably, in addition to do some scribing work, I'll probably have to restore these rivets. Which is annoying. Okay, so we've got that side down. I even came in here because I had filled this side a little bit of 3M Acryl, forgetting that that needs to be a panel line. That Acryl stuff is good for a lot of things. Scribing down its length is not one of them. If you just need to like do an intersecting panel line, like one of the ones that crosses, that's fine for that. But. tends to get a little bit crumbly when you ask for more. And I've got the tape on the clear parts there because I know that CA can fog clear parts usually when it's inside and it's the fumes that are coming off and get trapped. Um, I've had good luck with my Loctite stuff but it's a gel and so it's just a little bit more contained. But I haven't really had a chance to learn any lessons with this stuff yet, so hence my hesitancy. So I think that's good. So we're going to set that aside and let it kind of do its thing for a bit and we'll get back to it. Okay, so back to the gear bays and starting with these tank things. Uh, every picture I've seen of them shows them as either a very, very dark green or a black. So we're going to start off with some Moto Primer. Good old Moto. MK12. I believe this stuff is out of the comes from the Philippines or Indonesia or somewhere out that way over the Pacific. But it's pretty good shit. Um, I 
very functionally similar to Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black, but I've got a big old bottle of it and I already have some pre-mixed. So, one thing I found with it is that it really helps to go very heavy with the thinner when you're mixing it. Even if it seems like it's, you know, normally, you know, 50-50, two to one thinner to paint, whatever, it'll spray like shit. But if you really push it, it goes down great. Okay, it's time to put some paint in the gear base and I'm gonna go with good old Tamiya LP11. This stuff is awesome for representing sort of that lacquered silver finish. You can see on P-51 wings and landing gear struts and all that kind of good stuff. It's nice and silky. And it has basically replaced good old decanted Tamiya AS-12 as my go-to if I need a rock-solid sort of silver base. Definitely get some if you can. It's available on eBay, kind of around the world. Uh, it's not really available in the States that I've seen yet, but I hear that it is in places like Canada. and That's pretty much the only place I've heard of that it's actually like on store shelves. I'm sure there are others. One thing that annoys me is these lacquer painto bottles are, I don't know, they're they seem to gum up a lot more than the regular ones. Okay. Ah, move all the shit out of the way. Okay, first piece. Right, let's not tempt fate with that fucker anymore. One will be easy. And typically, I'd like to add a little bit more pop into here, but gear base. Basically, these are going to end up getting the same aqua gloss and Tamiya treatment as the inside got thank you compressor for shutting up um, anyway because I was think because I'm now considering doing more of a representative B17 than a specific B17 um, I can be free to have some fun with it but I'm gonna be basing it off of uh, Princess Pat from the I believe it was the 381st bomb group just a beat the hell, torn up, crashed and salvaged bomber with a replaced wing and a bunch of weird shit going on on the wings that nobody can figure out. And when you look at the engines, they are amazingly filthy, like filthy to the point that it's, you know, you're stunned that there's actually any oil actually running through the things because it looks like it's all over the cowls and all over the wings. So I figure with that and with the various ductwork running right through the gear bay, these things probably wouldn't have been in the best shape either. Yeah, that was not intentional. Okay, and because we want to model responsibly, go ahead and make sure that we get the relevant portions within 